Greetings Ventures, this is Lorne, your Guild Advisor, and this video is hopefully the start of a series I'll be producing periodically called Familia Record. In familiar record, I will, one by one, be giving attention to the individual characters in Damachi, especially the ones who don't get much focus in the anime due to the process of cutting content when adapting the light novel source material. For the first few videos of this series, I want to highlight characters who will have larger roles to play in the upcoming movie, Era of the Orion, as well as Season 2, coming in July. I will not spoil any content that goes beyond what the anime currently covers light novel-wise between Damachi Season 1 and Sword Artoria Season 1. However, I will reference Familia Chronicle Episode Ryu because it has been adapted by the Damachi mobile game, Damachi Memoria Freeze, and there are likely no plans to animate it. Without further ado, let's go over our first character from my new Familia Record series. Osfi Al Andromeda, age 22, level 4. Captain of Hermes Familia, a familia known for gathering information and going outside Orario to ferry messages. She sports aqua blue hair with one lock dyed white. Decked out with holsters carrying items of her own creation and covered by her white cloak, fraying the silver glasses complete the look of the experienced and intelligent adventurer, titled Perseus by the gods and goddesses. Fujino Omori, the author of the Dom Machi light novel series, draws a lot of inspiration from various mythologies often borrowing names and terms, and in Osfi's case, he references Greek mythology heavily. Starting with Osfi's title, Perseus was the Greek hero who slayed Medusa, a powerful gorgon who could turn people to stone with her gaze. With the aid of the Greek god Hermes, who no doubt inspired the Hermes that Osfi follows, Perseus was able to gather items such as the Hades helm and the Talaria, the winged sandals, and defeated Medusa. After taking down Medusa, Perseus saved an Ethiopian princess named Andromeda from a sea monster, using the Gorgon's severed head to turn the monster to stone. Later on, Perseus ended up marrying Andromeda as he fell in love with her at first sight. As you can see, Osfi carries the names of both the Greek hero and his betrothed. In my quick summation of the mythology that inspires Osfi's character, I mentioned two different items, the Hades helm and the Talaria. In Damachi, Osfi has what is known as the skill Enigma, being one of only five people in Araria with such a skill. This skill allows her to create many unique items, including the ones previously named from Greek mythology. The Hades Helm is an item that when worn, can render the wearer invisible. You can see it in use in Volume 5 of the main series, or Episode 12 of the anime when Mord acquires it from Osfi in Hermes' scheme to teach Belle about the jealousy of other adventurers. Ultimately, Mord fails to utilize it properly, relying too much on the item's power of invisibility. Osfi does indeed use this item herself in Sword Oratoria Volume 3, in the fight against all of us act, also known as Vendetta. While Bet is fighting and occupying the attention of the former leader of an evil's faction, Osfi takes the opportunity to sneak up on Vendetta while invisible and makes a cut across his neck. Unfortunately, this was cut out of the anime adaptation as it attempted to squeeze all of Volume 3 into two and a half episodes. You can of course find depictions of this scene in the light novel as well as the manga adaptation. The Talaria are the sandals that Osfi wears, which upon activation, give her the power of flight. She utilizes these in Volume 5 of the main series against the Black Goliath, which you can also see animated in Episode 13 of the anime. She also uses them in the fight against Vendetta to evade the Violas, much to the surprise of the villain. One interesting detail that alludes to Osfi's backstory is provided in Volume 5. It states that the Talaria was created by a young queen on an island nation with the Enigma skill to live out her dream to travel the skies. The text suggests that this young queen was Osfi, but it's confirmed in Volume 3 of Sword Oratoria, which plainly states that Talaria is Osfi's creation. However, her origin is not explored any more beyond that small mention in Volume 5. The fact that Osfi's surname is Andromeda, a name borrowed from an Ethiopian princess, 
lends credibility to a noble heritage. Hopefully, we'll get to learn more about Asfi's past if Amori sensei ever decides to write an entry, similar to Familia Chronicle episode Ryu, that instead focuses on Asfi or even Hermes Familia as a whole. Both the Hades Helm and Talaria are items that Asfi tries to keep secret, only using them when the need arises. Having known possession of such items could cause Hermes Familia and its members to become targets due to the incredible abilities the items can provide. Burst Oil is another creation of Asfi that functions like a hand grenade, exploding upon contact with the enemy. She creates the oil from an herb called Obia Flare, which is found in the volcanic regions north of Arario. The oil can completely incinerate monsters from even the middle levels. Other items that Asfi uses in her repertoire are sticky vials and darts, and she is also known to wield a short sword. She creates many non-competitive items as well, ranging from several different serums that can provide protection against curses and status magic, a harp known as Echi Tower that can attract monsters based on sound frequencies, and also a pen that turns the adventurer's blood into ink. Asfi is also revealed to know at least one magic skill, Kalav Argyll, but it has only been teased in the Black Goliath fight in Volume 5 of the Light Novels. She claims that her chant would take too long in battle, and the effects would be meaningless due to the regular's degeneration. As you can tell, Asfi is quite the impressive adventurer, being in charge of creating many unique items with her Enigma skill, and also managing to lead Hermes Familia as its captain. Hermes Familia is a familia that is known for its information gathering as well as being one of the few familias in Arario who can regularly go in and out of the city as they send messages between the parties inside and outside of Arario. As I previously mentioned, Asfi tries to hide a lot of her powerful items so the familia doesn't attract too much attention. This is a common theme with Hermes Familia because Hermes himself lies about the levels of his members, reporting their levels to the guild as lower than they truly are. The guild ranks familias accordingly based on the levels of its members. The higher the rank, the higher the taxes that the guild requires the familia to pay each year. You could say that Hermes Familia is committing tax evasion. It is revealed in the Vendetta arc that most of Hermes Familia's members who undertake the quest with eyes are level 3, with Asfi being level 4. Throughout this arc, you can see that Asfi places a lot of pride in her familia, and that she is a very capable party commander, being able to issue orders and tactics with ease, with the party taking out monsters smoothly and efficiently. Not only that, but she clearly knows how to utilize the individual strengths of her party members, commanding Lulinade to create a map as they navigate the food pantry on 424, and ordering Meryl to use a strong fire magic to open the artificial plant wall created to block entryway into the food pantry, housing the creation of monsters and also the embryo inside. Asfi also cares deeply for her familia, choosing to focus on the survival of Hermes' familia when they become separated from eyes while she battles Ravis alone. The Sword Oratoria manga actually expands upon the Vendetta arc quite a bit, giving names and personalities to many of the characters of Hermes' familia not mentioned even in the light novel. One character I like to highlight is Keeks, a member of Hermes' familia who has feelings for Asfi, but is never able to truly confess them even after sacrificing himself to ensure her safety in the fights against Vendetta. Several other Hermes Familia members die in this horrific conflict as well. Keek's sacrifice to give Asfi his high potion is what enables Asfi to take the risk of a sneak attack against Vendetta despite her weakened state. The normally calculating Asfi is not afraid to take risk when the situation requires it. You can also see this in the fight against the Black Goliath. Though she doesn't want to become one of the monster's primary targets, Asi recognizes that this course of action suggested by Ryu is their best chance at defeating the enemy. Asfi even goes so far as to utilize her Talaria against the monster Rex, despite the fact that there is a good chance one of the many adventurers involved in the battle on 418 could see her. She even keeps the Goliath's attention at bay by herself when Ryu is assisting a knocked out Bell. Speaking of Ryu, Asi possesses a great sense of self-pride as well always wanting to settle her debts. In Familia Chronicle, episode Ryu, Asfi shows off Hermes Familia's intel network by gathering the information on Ana Craze that Ryu requested in the span of one night. She also warns Ryu of the dangers of sneaking into the casino where Ana is being held, as one wrong move could have a lasting effect on the politics surrounding Arario and the outside parties that have invested in the Grand Casino. 
showing that Asfi is not only knowledgeable of the dungeon and item making, but the business flowing around Araria as well. She is truly the star captain of Hermes Familia, well informed about Araria and its politics, as well as being a very capable adventurer, item maker, and leader. There is much to be said about Asfi's dedication to Hermes himself as well. Asfi can be regularly seen around Hermes, often chastising him for his aloof nature, while also being easily embarrassed by her god's teasing. Even though she may be disgusted by many of Hermes' schemes, such as Asfi having to give more to Hades' helm as a way to test Bell, Asfi still follows Hermes' word, showing immense dedication to her god, no matter how much stress Hermes seems to put her through. Poor Asfi, she really needs a break with everything that is required of her. It's hard to imagine her getting much downtime, being the leader of Hermes' familia, keeping up with her intelligence network, and also creating new items with her Enigma skill. As the Damachi series progresses, we are bound to see Asfi and Hermes' familia pop up more, as they are a rather important familia due to their investigative skills and Hermes' familiar contact with Aranos, the god who watches over the guild and the dungeon. Based on when you watch this video, you may be looking forward to the Era of the Orion movie, where Asfi and Hermes have a somewhat prominent role based on the trailers. Hopefully this video was able to give you a bigger appreciation for Asfi and her character as you watch the movie, the upcoming Season 2, and any other content in which she may be involved. Damachi Season 1 is available for streaming on Crunchyroll, Verve, and High Dive as Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon Season 1. You can also buy the physical release by Sentai Filmworks. The Sword Oratoria anime is available for streaming on Amazon if you own Prime, and can also be watched on High Dive outside of North America. This also has a physical release by Sentai Filmworks. Both these animes are produced by JC Staff. There's also a mobile game called Damachi Memoria Freeze, localized by Crunchyroll Games, available on Android and iOS, which covers the stories of the two anime, as well as Familiar Chronicle episode Ryu. It also features many original story events, some of which are written by the author of the Damachi series himself, Fujino Omori. You can even play the story of the Air of the Orion movie, also produced by JC Staff and licensed for release by Sentai Filmworks, in a current movie event. Even if you missed the event, you can still read through it from the story digest in the game. I strongly recommend picking up the light novels written by Fujino Omori, as they are the source material for the series, especially if you want to read ahead and experience the story in its purest form, free from cuts and skips made to adapt the story into an anime. The novels are translated by Yen Press, as well as the manga adaptations, and you can buy both forms of written media from most places where you can purchase books. Thank you so much for watching this first video for Familia Record. This is a series I've been wanting to start for a long time, and until I really started working on this video, I didn't know how much work I would have to do to actually make these videos, but now I know it's going to be a lot of work. And hopefully the next two videos, uh, one being focused on Naza and the next being focused on Mikito, I can release those before Season 2 of the anime starts. And I do have another project I'm trying to do, which is a light novel to anime comparison for season one of the anime. The original plan was to have that done before season two starts, but since this was so much work, I'm not sure if I'm able to do that. But uh, the video on Naza does have a lot of stuff in it that will uh, be important for season two. So at the very least, that needs to be released uh, before season two because she will be a prominent character in there. And the anime skipped a lot of content based on Naza, so uh, look forward to that. Read the light novels if you want to learn more about Damachi if you haven't already. Uh, the Damachi Memoria Freeze game also has uh, the Naza story that the anime skipped from the light novel, so check that out if you're interested in that. And hopefully uh, you guys are looking forward to the Arity Orion movie and season 2 upcoming in the summer. And thank you guys again so much for watching this first installment of Familia Record. But if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more Damachi content. If you want to follow up with what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. And as always, continue enjoying your time venturing in Rario and the dungeon. This is Lorne, your guild advisor, signing out.